Welcome to another Fear Street Review. Yes, today we are talking about Awake, which is available on Netflix starting today. Boom. Right now. The ninth. Um, knowing us, there's going to be a couple of spoilers, so hit pause and come back to us, unless you just live for spoilers. Like, if you want to, like, have nothing left to the imagination or surprise, that you keep watching this. Yeah. <laughs> so, in a wake, after a mysterious global event wipes out all the electronics and takes away humankind's ability to sleep, chaos ensues. But Jill, played by Gina Rodriguez, an ex-soldier with a troubled past, may hold the key to a cure in the form of her own daughter. So, I didn't really get into Jane the Virgin, and so this was my first Gina Rodriguez film, and I was... I know she's problematic and that she was rapping the N-word on her Insta story and likes to take digs at Black women just when she's ever around verbally. Um, but I tried to go in with like a clear head just to see what she can do because I don't, I've never really engaged with her other than a couple episodes of Jane the Virgin. And I wanted to see what she's like as an actor. And I don't feel like this was the right vehicle for her. <laughs> I felt like um, this is not the role perhaps in her, her bag let's just say yeah i wasn't aware of all the problematic stuff that she had done in the past um and i also i've never seen anything of chain the virgin um so i was super unaware of her and i mean i watched it and she she wasn't a highlight in the movie and she wasn't a low light in the movie for me she was just like meh so yeah, yeah. i i feel like also part of my issue which is an ongoing issue because Hollywood makes it an issue, is I don't like the idea of a Latinx single mother who lost her kids to, I assume, the husband's family because the mother, grandmother, is a white woman who's an amazing actor. Um, and this Latinx single mother now sells drugs for reasons. I These were so many problematic things thrown at her and so many stereotypes that we just don't need in the media. And it added nothing to the plot. It wasn't like it's awake and drugs or awake and single moms. It was just like, we can't have Latinx women having things. Stop it. Yeah. And if you're not going to mine it, why even put it in there? If you're not going to like give us something about it, because it really was just like the opening scene and then never got brought up again. <laughs> there was no way to save what they did to that character in this movie. <laughs> but this wasn't because again, this is not a character we need to keep see we don't need more single brown moms who sell drugs just because um if we're gonna have those stories find those mothers and those kids out there and have them tell these stories so it comes across in a genuine way and it's got an actual there's actual purpose as opposed to you just being like brown people can't have houses brown people can't have families because that's how it comes across <laughs> um i i also had an issue with dodge who is the only black man with lines, there might have been like some soldiers or something I'm forgetting, but the only black man with lines who comes back to save them and then Gina Rodriguez's character Jill rewards him by holding a gun on him as he drives her family to safety because she can't trust him. Um, <laughs> and then he comes back to save them again and that's when he steps into the sacrificial role that we keep putting black people in. And we gotta stop that shit. We just, I'm tired of seeing this. I've seen it so many times just these last 10, 15 days while catching up on The Conjuring and other things. Right. No more. Just don't. Also, why did he need to be a, a, an ex-convict? Like, why, why couldn't he have been um, a... Lawyer. Pedestrian. Yeah. Doctor. <laughs> yeah. Nope. He has to be a, coming out of jail. Anyway. Yeah, we're um, going to prison today because people are not sleeping. Right. He's getting the hell out of Dodd was like one of the catch you a lines yeah uh so <laughs> i i will say i agree with everything you just said but i i do like that this does center a woman where in most of these like disaster sci-fi kind of i mean any of the ones i can think about think of uh the day after tomorrow 2012 um any of them it's a dad with their kid with their kids this is a mom so i like that kind of uh, shift and subverting expectations, but it could have been handled better for sure, 100%. And the script. It's a breadcrumb because we keep doing breadcrumbs. So it's it like we're going to give crumb. you the thing, but we're not going to give it to you in a way that's not offensive. <laughs> yeah. 
But I want more. I want more female-led sci-fi disaster films, please. Thank you. And make them correctly the next time. Yes, that, that. <laughs> Otherwise, don't waste my time. <laughs> yeah. And, and as I said earlier, the script is pluggy and a little forced, like the line, you're getting the hell out of Dodge, and his name is Dodge, if you didn't catch that. Um, I, it, it wasn't cute. It wasn't funny. I mean, I'm all for funny, like sarcastic lines, but like make them funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I found myself wondering who the audience was for with a lot of the lines and a lot of the line readings. Um, I also felt like we had this really cool beginning to this really cool conflict of science versus religion and what you're going to do when people who are strong in whichever side of that argument they choose to be come after this little girl because they need answers. But we lost that so early on. We lost it. And it just sort of devolved into, we're not the walking dead. We're not bird box. But we're trying to copy a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to take everything that didn't work in both of those and nothing that did. So, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, like, I, I agree. I think this film had some real, real potential. Um, I love the concept of like the, the sun flare and that we can't sleep. That's really interesting to me. Um, some of the it had some good scenes like I love the scene you were speaking of in the church when that whole argument ensues about um, do we leave the girl with the church or do we take her to the scientists and I and I love where the mom comes in to that and she's like they're, she's screwed either way so like we're not choosing either of those sides because if you take her to the scientists she's going to be studied and if you take her to the, leave her with the religious people she's going to be who knows what so I, I like that. Um, it just didn't, they didn't mine enough out of those situations. Like the relationship between the grandmother and the mother. Why was, again, like we said earlier, why was the grandmother white? We don't know who the father was. We never even had anything with the father. Um, what was the, what was the catalyst to get her out of the military? Why was she selling drugs? Where was she? There was some, I left the movie with more questions than I went into it. And half the questions shouldn't even need to be asked. But I yeah. will say it had potential. It just needed the correct hands on it to make get it there. Also, the pacing was just awful. Like everything took way too damn long, especially when I was not enjoying myself. Um, <laughs> we don't need everything to be so slow. Some lines can be said quickly. Some scenes can happen quickly. And it feels like nobody checked in on pacing until the end when there was chaos. And that's when I actually stepped forward to be like, are we having a movie now? Um, <laughs> and I was engaged, but then it was over again. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say really quickly, the other thing they didn't mind was the relation, even the relationship between Jill and her kids. Because there was, there was a few really nice tidbits of special, specifically the son and her, but they, they didn't go anywhere. They didn't go deeper than that. And so, I, yeah, anyway. It felt like this was the first time she met these kids the whole movie. And like when she has the son, like to check over the body of the man in the church while she goes down to the basement to find the daughter. And I'm like, I feel like there were better plans that we could have done to traumatize him less. Probably. I, the way she talked to them felt like they were afterthoughts the whole movie, even when she was looking at them directly and being like, and whatever you do, don't trust anybody, especially men. And it was just, the way it was said, I just, I don't know. I don't know what the filming schedule was like. I don't know what all was happening on set. And, but like, it was a lot of, it was a lot of things I have questions about. Um, <laughs> I also saw so many hints and like impressions of cool sci-fi shows and books I grew up with, but like none of it was borrowed enough or like respected enough to really stick a landing anywhere. So it's giving you all these different feels from all these different genre shows and you're getting wisps of things, but like nothing is sticky, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, the, it just, it really didn't stick the landing. I, and Sheree can always predict the ending and predict what the solution is. I sometimes can. And this one, it felt so obvious that it almost pissed me off that I was like, why don't you, why can't you put two and two together that your daughter died and came back to life from resuscitation by the cops that's why she can sleep. Spoiler alert to anyone who hasn't seen this movie. That is the <laughs> end. You, If you die and then you come back to life, you can sleep. Yeah, yeah. Again, I, I don't like a movie that's predictable and also doesn't get there in a fun way. Like if you're going to be predictable, own that lane and make it interesting. 
this did not. This was just like, here's what it is. Here you go. And I was like, I don't, can we have fun? And I was like, no. Yeah. All right, Sheree, yay or nay? This is a hard no for me. Um, of all the movies are reviewed, usually I'm like, I can see a part of me wanting to go back or I can see somebody else liking this. I have nothing nice to say about this one and I can't recommend it to anybody for any reason. So it's the first one that really broke me. Yeah, it's a softer no for me. Just a soft, it's still a no. <laughs> it's still an A, <laughs> but it's a little softer. It's got some, it's got some give to it, you know? Um, <laughs> Because I do feel like this film had potential with the con, like in the very conceptual I starting of this film, it had potential, and they just needed the right people to get around with it. Um, the the I, I will say after I watched the film, I was like, oh yeah, I like that. But now that I've sat with it for however many hours it's been, I it, it's it's become a no. Um, it started with like a really soft yes or really soft yay, and now it's like a pretty. It's a day. <laughs> um, yeah. and they just didn't. They didn't follow the plot devices that worked. Like the, the I felt like whoever the yeah, it just. I, I if you if you like disaster sci-fi films, I might recommend this to you, but it would not be to your, near the top of my list. I would have to like, it'd be on like page five. <laughs> page eight for me, and that's if you just really like new stuff, not if you want to keep the quality. If you've seen everything else, here you go. Yeah. Um, that being said, though, special thanks to our friends at Brigade Marketing for making this review possible. <laughs> yes, we promise we won't shit the next one you give us. <laughs> <laughs> As always, hit us up in the comments. Let us know if you agree with us or disagree. Maybe you loved the movie. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you fell asleep during it. So that's very, you know, uh, or maybe you weren't you awake. Like, you weren't awake to enjoy a wake. That's a story. <laughs> well, let us know. Uh, so yeah, hit us up in the comments and make sure you stay fierce out there. Bye.